Hi Bobcats, it's Miss Lee again, and we're continuing our video series on linear relationships. In this video, we're going to learn how to write equations, algebraic equations, from tables. Make sure that you have your notes, that you fill them in completely as we go through the video. Uh, pause the video if necessary. If you don't have your notes, then just take notes on a sheet of paper or in your journal. Okay, let's review. Let's go back to elementary school. And do you remember the input-output machine? Sometimes it was called the function table or function machine. This is where you input a number and it goes through a, a rule and it spits out a specific number. Well, this is kind of the same thing that we're going to do with our tables and our equations. This number that you input into the machine, this is our x variable. It's our independent variable. And remember, you have to know the independent variable to get the dependent variable. So the number the machine spits out is the dependent variable, or y. And we use a function rule to determine how the input produces that one output. So these are a couple of, of, uh, couple of examples down here. The first one has an input of 6. So we input the 6 into the machine, it goes through the rule, and it spits out a 12. So what do you think the rule is? Well, we know we're increasing, so we're either going to be adding or multiplying. And I can easily see that I could add 6. I could do 6 plus 6, and that would give me a 12. But do I get the same thing if I add 6 to 8? To eight? Will I get a 16? No, because 8 plus 6 is not 16. 8 plus 6 is 14. So we know we're not going to be adding. So the only other operation that increases is multiplication. And I can multiply 6 times 2 to equal 12, and 8 times 2 is 16. So this is our function rule that we're going to be multiplying by 2. So we can finish our table. 7 times 2 would be 14. 10 times 2 would be 20. Remember, you use the same rule for every input value to get the output. Let's look at the table on the right. So we have an input of 1, and we want to get an 8. Again, we're increasing, so we're either adding or multiplying. I could add 7 to 8. 1 plus 7, I'm sorry, 7 to 1. 1 plus 7 equals 8. If I add 7 to 5, will that give me a 12? It will. So we know our rule is to add 7. So if we add 7 to 10, that gives us 17. And if we add 7 to 25, we get a 32. So this is what you did in elementary school, and we're going to take that and we're going to build upon it. So from these tables of input and output values, we can write algebraic equations. And these are the steps for writing the algebraic equations. Your first step is you need to identify what the independent and the dependent variables are. Not every time will you be given x or y, because we know x is the independent and y is the dependent. Sometimes you'll be given situations and you'll have to determine which one is the independent, which one is the dependent. Or sometimes you'll be given different variables, not x and y, but maybe m and p. And you'll have to know which one is, represents independent and which is the dependent. Step two, you're going to identify it as being a multiplicative or an additive relationship. Okay, so we've already talked about multiplicative and additive. Multiplicative is when you're multiplying or dividing by a certain number. So if it's multiplicative, the multiplier will be the coefficient to x in the equation. So if I'm multiplying by 2, then that's going to be my coefficient to x. It's going to be 2x, which means 2 times x. Or maybe 2 times t, if your variable was t, 2t. So whatever you're multiplying or dividing by will be the multiplier, the coefficient. If it's an additive, then the increase or decrease amount will be the constant in your equation. So if you're adding or decreasing x by some number, that's your constant, x plus 3. Remember, a constant is just a number. Um, it could be x minus 5. You're subtracting 5. Then once you've identified whether it's multiplicative or additive, then you're ready to write your equation. And there's two forms that you can write. If you'll recall, first of all, a requ a, an equation has that equal sign. You have to have an equal sign in your equation. And you're solving for x. Go back to the function table. We know, I'm sorry, you're solving for y. We know the x. It's the y that we're solving for. 
So in our equation, it's always going to be y equals. In our linear equation, I should, I should say, it's always going to be y equals. And y is going to equal either k times x, if it's a multiplicative, so this one is your multiplicative form, or y equals x plus b, if it's an additive relationship. Okay, so let's do some practice. All right, here's our first table. We need to identify the independent and the dependent variables. Luckily, they've already given us the x and the y. So our x is the independent, our dependent is the y. Now we need to determine if this is an additive or multiplicative relationship. All right, what can we do to one to make a seven? Well, we know we're increasing, so we are either going to add or we are going to multiply. I could add six to one to make a seven, but when I add six to two, I get eight, not 14. So we know we're not going to add six. So that leaves multiplying. One times seven will make seven. Two times seven will give us the 14. Let's check one more. If I multiply four times seven, we get the 28. So we know that this is a multiplicative relationship. And what's our expression or our rule? We're multiplying seven times x. Each time we multiply the x amount, the x value, by seven. So which equation are we going to use? We're not going to use the addition one, we're going to use the multiplication. And now we write it. It's always going to be y equals, that's not going to change. The number that you're multiplying or dividing by is going to be this coefficient to x. In this case we're multiplying by 7, so it's going to be 7 times x, which is written 7x. Okay, our next example. Independent, dependent variables, again, we're told in our table that we have x and y. Now let's look for a rule. Let's determine if it's additive or multiplicative. Okay, I can add four to two to make six. When I add four to three, do I make a seven? Sure does. If I add four to five, does it give me a nine? Yes. So we know that it's an additive relationship and the rule or the expression is that we're going to add four to x each time. So which equation are we gonna use? We're not gonna use the multiplication equation, we're gonna use the one with the addition. So let's write it. It's always gonna be y equals. y is gonna equal x, because x can be any value, and to that x we're going to add four. So y equals x plus four. All right, let's keep going. This time our table is not going vertical like this one is, it's going horizontal. So all of our x values are in the top row, all of our y values are in the bottom row. Okay, so we need to determine the rule between the input and the output. Okay, so from 5 to 15, how can we turn that 5 into a 15? Well, we could add 10, right? But when we add 10 to 9, does it make 27? No. You always have to check your rule with the other input values to make sure you get the same output, to make sure that you're using the right rule, because addition is not the right rule for this one. This one's going to be multiplication. We can multiply 5 times 3, and that gives us 15. When I multiply 9 times 3, do I get 27? Yep. And 14 times 3 will give us the 42. So our expression, our rule, is that we're going to multiply x by 3 and we're going to write that as 3x. So looking up here, let's go ahead and determine which equation we want to use. Since we're multiplying, we want to use the first equation. So our equation is always going to start with y equals. You can find the output value by multiplying 3 times the x value. So y equals 3x is our equation. This one might be a little bit tricky because it's got some negative numbers in here. All right, so let's get going on this one. We want to go from 2 to negative 3. Off the top of my head, I'm not thinking about any multiplication or division. I can't think of anything that you're going to multiply or divide 2 by to give you a negative 3. So it's got to be an additive relationship. And since we're getting smaller, we want to subtract. 
Now dealing with negative numbers can be a little difficult at first. So let's go ahead and draw a number line. Here's two, and I want to go to negative three. So there's negative one, negative two, negative three, and this was a positive one. Okay, if I'm starting off with two, and I want to come over here to negative three, I'm getting smaller, I'm going to have to subtract. So how many do I have to subtract? Well remember, you're not going to start counting where you start at, so we're not going to count the two. We're going to count, this would be one, two, three, four, and five. So to go from two to negative three, I need to subtract five. So let's see if the same thing works for the three and the negative two. Here's three, here's negative two. This would be one, two, three, four, and five. It works. I'm subtracting five from each term. You can also do this, four minus five. Remember, combine your integers. If the signs are different, subtract. It's gonna give you one. There are more negatives, so it'd be a negative one. And when we did, so that was this, four minus five gives us the negative one, and five minus five gives us zero. So this is our rule. We want to subtract five from x. Whatever x value we're gonna put in the machine, we wanna subtract five. So our equation, we're gonna use the additive equation. The output, y, is always going to equal your x value minus 5. This is the equation. So I'd like for you to pause the video and try this one on your own and then come back and we'll check it and see how you did. Okay, let's see. We're going to go from 5 to 2. It looks like we're going to subtract 3. So does the same thing work here? 10 minus 3, does that equal 7? It does. 15 minus 3, does that equal 12? It does. So we know our rule is that we're going to subtract 3 from the x value. So which equation are we going to use? The additive equation. So y, the output, is going to equal the input x minus 3. That is your equation. I'm hoping that you're finding this kind of easy to do because what I'd like for you to do now is pause the video and work these two on your own and then come back and check to see how you did. Okay, here we go. So we have Cabrini's age and Nikos's age. We have X and we have N. This is gonna be our X. This N is going to be the Y. So let's determine if this is additive or multiplicative. What can we do with six to make a two? We could divide by three or we could subtract four. Can I divide 10 by three and get a six? No, but I could subtract four. 10 minus four is six. So it looks like that's gonna be our rule. Let's see, what's 21 minus four? It's 17. So we're going to subtract four from our input or our x values. So the equation is gonna be y equals, so all you do is add the y equals to your expression. y equals x minus four. And our second example for your rule, did you get x divided by two? And remember, x divided by two, we wanna start writing this like a mathematician using that fraction bar, x divided by two. You could also write it as one half x because dividing by two is the same as one half of. So either one of these will work. One divided by Actually, I think I have that wrong, don't I? We're not dividing by, we are multiplying. Sorry, one times two is two. Two times two is four. Three times two is six. So I got that one all messed up, didn't I? I bet you were going, that's not right, wait a minute, how did she get that? Sorry, so the expression or the rule is that we want to multiply x by two the number of songs. The number of songs is your independent, the total cost is your dependent. 
Remember we, we talked before about whenever you're looking for the total of something, that's usually going to be your dependent value, your y, and that's what that is. So then for the equation, all we have to do is add our y equals to our expression. So y equals 2x. The output, the total cost, is going to equal 2 times the number of songs. Okay, you now have three independent practice problems. So you'll need to pause the video, solve each problem, come back, check your answer. Our first one is you're going to write the linear equation represented in each table. This is problem A. Go ahead, determine if it's additive or multiplicative, write your expression, and then turn that into an equation. Once you have your answer, come back and check. Okay, the correct equation is y equals x minus 5. So to go from 5 to 0, we definitely, it definitely looks like we're subtracting 5. So you have to check a couple more just to make sure it's the right, the right rule. And 10 minus 5 is 5. 25 minus 5 is 20. So that is the correct rule. Problem B. Did you get the equation y equals 1 half x or y equals x divided by 2? Let's see how that works. We're going from 20 to 10, so we're getting smaller. We could subtract 10, but when we do 16 minus 10, we should have gotten a 6, not an 8. So it's not going to be a subtraction. It's going to be a division. And 20 divided by 2 gives us the 10. Check it. 16 divided by 2 will give us an 8. And when we divide 8 by 2, it gives us the 4. So the rule is to divide by 2. Equation y equals x divided by 2. And remember, dividing by 2 is the same as taking half of it, multiplying by half. So you could have written your equation this way. Either one is correct. And our last example. Go ahead and pause it. Find the equation. Come back and check. Okay, did you get y equals negative 7 times x? Negative 7x? Well, let's see how this works. Looking at the rule, if we multiply 1 times a negative 7, does that give us a negative 7? Sure. What about 2 times a negative 7? Well, remember, a positive times a negative is a negative, and 2 times 7 is 14. So that is correct. If I do 4 times negative 7, negative 28 is correct. So this is the correct equation. Nice job, Bobcats.